Well, this morning I wanted to share with you in a shell. And by that I mean somehow separated or insulated from bad things. I suppose that one of the greatest truths about Christmas is God became a man. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Remember the star of Bethlehem led to a manger, not a palace. Jesus was born in a very humble, vulnerable place, not in a place of money, power, and privilege. So from birth, Jesus connected with the vulnerable of humanity. And when we read the Gospels, we see that he chose to minister to those that most of society was separated from, distance from. He ministered to those people that were vulnerable. And Jesus bold preaching against the hypocrisy of religious leaders, well, that made him a target of their hatred and their plots and schemes to destroy him. All the Gospels show that Jesus was vulnerable and that he suffered and was sacrificed for us. Having said all of that, um, there's an erroneous notion and sometimes teaching that goes like this. Chris, Christians are kept in a shell of God's protection. And if something bad happens to you, then it's your fault because you didn't have enough faith or you sinned or you somehow got out of the will of God. But the Bible teaches something different. The Bible teaches something different. Yes, there is sovereign, divine protection. And we could look for scriptures there in Job and Jesus himself when he said, you're in my Father's hand. But we are not insulated from, kept from every bad thing that happens. And so I want us to look at the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Because in this letter, he candidly talks to them about being vulnerable. He talks about his sufferings. And he never attributes any of his sufferings to lack of faith or sin or being out of the will of God. He explains the reasons and the purpose three different places throughout this letter. And each one of these examples gives us a little greater insight to what's going on. And hopefully it will encourage us. And so I want us to look at what he says in chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians and look at verses 8 and 9. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were burdened beyond measure above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sense of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Did you catch what he said in verse 8? Troubled beyond measure. So much of it you can't even, you can't even quantify it above strength, despair of life. Other versions put it great pressure beyond our ability. And verse 9 shows the appropriate response. Don't give up. Don't try and figure it all out, what you did wrong. Don't trust in your own ability. The res right response is trust in God. The God who raises the dead. The God who does the impossible. And when it comes to trusting God, it's best if we focus on remembering what He's already done. Now, all of us have a list in our lives of things that God has done, but if we just look at the big list of the fact that He's Creator God, who spoke this big, uncomprehendably big universe, He just spoke it into existence. 
And when it comes to the fact that he's our redeemer, accomplishing that stated plan, fulfilling what was spoken, that it was started even before the world began. He fulfilled a promise that was given in the Garden of Eden right after the fall of man. And Christmas reminds us of this promise. Paul says we're in these times to trust God. And yet how prone we are to wonder, look everywhere else. But just a few nights ago, the stars aligned again, reminding us of this event at Christmas. And we see that God is still in control. We're reminded that he keeps his promises. And the fact is, bad and hurtful circumstances don't negate God's promises. So let's look at another one of Paul's explanations that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Paul said the treasure was in earthen vessels, jars of clay. These are fragile and easily be broken. And he goes on and, and he lists things that he has suffered, hard pressed on every side. You ever feel like the walls are just closing in? Perplexed. I would suppose that most of us have felt perplexed during this year at all the different things that are taking place. Struck down. So whether it's physically or legally, it brings a feeling of helplessness. I think that skipped persecuted. I suppose a lot of small businesses scattered across our nation have felt that way. God's people are not granted exemptions or immunity or insulation from these things. But Paul did express a purpose. I want us to look at verse 11 again. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh, so that the life of Jesus may be seen in us. The truth of it is, he lives in us. That means in the middle of these things that we go through, he is with us. We don't go through them alone. He is with us. I want us to just for a moment look to an Old Testament example. One that is amazing. It gives hope. Son of Daniel, chapter 3, where the three Hebrews are delivered from the, the fire that they're cast into because they would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image. The truth is they weren't kept from the fire. They were kept through the fire. And something amazing happens along with the fact that they survived it. I want us to look at what Nebuchadnezzar said. It's found in verses 24 and 25. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, who was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. He went through the fire with them. He lives in us. As believers of Christ, followers of Christ, we can be assured that whatever we go through in this life, Jesus is right there 
with us. He's with us. He goes through it with us. So I want us to look at the third example that Paul gives. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'd like us to look at verses 8 through 10. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul prayed three times, take it away. And I'm convinced that Paul's prayers were in faith. They were not lacking faith in any way. But they weren't answered the way he expected. The answer he got was, my grace is sufficient for you. God said, my grace is bigger than the circumstance you're facing. And he went on to say that his strength was made perfect. In other words, it was completed, it was fulfilled in weakness. You know that often it's in our weakness, our total inability, that we see the reality of His strength. Because the truth is, how prone are we to trust our own ability, our own strength, our own ways? And if there was any possibility of that working out for us, we'd go with it. I won't ask for a show of hands how many have tried that one. And then you find out that. Our efforts, our abilities, our strength, it, it's, it's all stripped away. We come to the conclusion, I can't do this. And again, we see and know that it's God and God alone that caused it to come out, caused us to get through it, caused it to work out. I don't want us to overlook Paul's Declaration in verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Now, I suppose all of Paul's instruction would lose significance and I would be negligent if I didn't take us back to Paul's opening statement in this letter that gives context to all of these things that we have been looking at. So I want us to go back and I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, when Paul says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all tribulation, all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation so abounds through Christ. Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation, and our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that if you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. You know, the truth is, we're surrounded by people that are suffering. Many of them suffering things that are so horrible that, from a human standpoint, there is no explanation. We can't explain it. We can't answer the why. But Paul shows us here what we can answer. The who. Who we can go to for help. To God in Christ. Verse 4. Who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort by which we ourselves are comforted by God. We can comfort others because of what God has done for us. He's done things for us. We have faced things. We have suffered things. And God has been there. This comfort that we get from God is going to involve these components that we just looked at. 
and I, I want to refresh them to you because we've just looked at them. The first one is trusting God, the God who keeps his promise. That's part of how we're comforted. It's by trusting God who keeps His promise. The next thing is, is that knowing that Christ goes through everything that we face in life, He is right there with us. He goes through it with us. And the last one is knowing that His strength is made perfect, it's completed, it's fulfilled in our weakness. When we're unable to change the circumstances by ourselves. Those are part of the things that help us and bring us comfort in these situations. So I've shared these things to ask a few questions. And the first one is, maybe there's someone here this morning that wants to accept Christ. You recognize that you need forgiveness for sins. You want the abundant and eternal life that's offered to you. If that's you this morning, just, just raise your hand. And, and maybe there's some that you're facing some hard and some overwhelming things. Maybe you've been like Paul, you prayed multiple times, you would take this away, but it's still overwhelming you. Well, if that's you, can I encourage you to trust God? He keeps his word. Can I encourage you to know that Christ is going through it with you? Whatever it is, he's right there with you. And it's in your weakness, your complete inability to change the situation, that that's when his strength is going to become a reality. So would you pray with me? Father, I ask that you would help us to see that you have not changed. Regardless of all the change and time that's passed in this world, you have not changed and you have kept your word. You have been faithful at all times. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would reassure us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. That you will go through anything with us. Lord, may we learn to seek you in the midst of the trial. And Lord, I, I pray that as we recognize our inability, Lord, we would not let our inability determine our faith or obedience. But may our faith be upon you. May we be trusting your spirit to enable us, to empower us, to go through whatever this is, that your strength would be shown. Your strength would be noticed, and your strength is more than enough. So I pray, Lord, for these that are facing these such times, Lord, remind them of these things. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you, keep you.